Hey y'all and welcome back to another video. So based off the title, you guys already know today I'm going to be doing a Q&A while I apply this clay mask in my hair. So like I guess another deep condition with me Q&A I guess you could say. Well not deep condition, I guess mask with me um, and a Q&A. So right now my hair looks the way it does because I just finished rinsing out the African Pride pre poo So I rinsed that out and normally I would have just gone in with the shampoo. But because today I'm going to be using a clay mask, I decided I'm, I might as well just go ahead and apply that outside of the shower. So typically whenever I do a clay mask, it's usually on just like co-washed hair or just hair that's detangled. So I skipped the shampooing process and then as far as conditioning, like I said, I've already pre I, I pre-pooed my hair. So let's jump right into it. Like you guys can see, I have lots of buildup in my hair. I cannot wait to get this clay in. I've been experimenting with a lot of products these last few weeks and when, when I'm not experimenting with new products, I'm kind of not really taking care of my hair because you know, I'm just like trying to get a break from it. So just giving my hair a little TLC, much needed TLC while I answer your guys' questions. Well, really quick, so the mask, I just used bentonite clay. I have a video on my channel already of how I put this together. So bentonite clay, I mix some oils, like jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, and apple cider vinegar. So I just mix that up together, and I think that should be enough, um, that should be enough clay for my head. All right, so where do I begin? You guys have some good questions. I'm excited about this. All right, so I don't know if I'm gonna start with YouTube or Instagram first. Uh, let's just go with Instagram. All right, so first question is, do you have siblings? So yes, I actually have two brothers, one on my dad's side and one for both of my parents. So two siblings in total, two brothers. I'm the youngest and the only girl. Oh, so I also did on, um, whatchamacallit, on Instagram, I said either, you know, ask questions that you guys want answers to or maybe drop some assumptions. So she assumes that I have a boyfriend. Assumption incorrect. Don't have a boyfriend at all. Very much single. Um, would you ever, whoo, would you ever return to a nine to five job and why or why not? Listen, I don't know what the future has in store for me, so I will never say never, because life has a very funny way of humbling you the second that you say that that can never be me and you know, whatever. And like I said, you never really know what the future has in store. As of right now, I really don't want to, you guys. I am trying my best to set myself up for success in the future so that I am not obligated and I don't need a nine to five job. It has to be something that I like fall so deeply in love with and I'm just like so passionate about. It pays well. I have some form of control over my schedule maybe. I don't know y'all. Influencing has been pretty lucrative for me right now and I'm thinking about like somehow maybe investing the money I've been making since I'm living with my parents. But in any way that I can set myself up for the future where I can just like have multiple streams of income. I don't need to depend on a nine to five, then honestly, that that would be a dream, honestly and truly. What advice would you give the younger version of yourself? Um, The younger version of myself, I would probably let her know that, as cliche as it sounds, everything's gonna work out the way it's supposed to. Everything will make sense eventually. Just trust the process regardless of what it is whether it's a heartbreak, a job you didn't get, an opportunity you think you missed out on. It'll all make sense eventually. Maybe not right now, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next year, but eventually it'll make sense. So just, just relax and trust the process. What made you start creating natural hair content? What made it motivates you to continue? So to be honest with y'all, the first reason why I decided to start a YouTube channel was because I didn't have any hobbies. I just went to work, I went to school. I didn't have anything for me. You know, in addition to that, I was getting a lot of questions. At this point in time, I was getting really familiar with like my hair and like made lots of progress. You know what I mean? A lot of people were transitioning at that point in college. So I got so many questions, you know, on my way to class, on campus, at work so many questions about my hair and I just wanted to find a way to like help as many people as I can as effectively as I can basically so I was like you know what why not just start a YouTube channel like I have editing experience I used to be in TV production I used to be in broadcasting I have public speaking experience I'm a pretty outgoing person so I'm like why not like why not so that's what initially started prompted me to start a YouTube channel and creating natural hair content how can one go about getting a brand getting brand partnership um if i'm not mistaken i think i've seen a few questions similar to this so let me know if you guys 
want more dedicated videos in regards to like being an influencer, being a content creator, getting brand deals and stuff like that. But I would definitely say networking, reaching out, don't be scared to reach out. I think there's like a misconception, or maybe not necessarily a misconception, at least I at one point thought that hey, if the brand doesn't reach out to you, then there's no point in shooting your shot because if they wanted to work with you, they would have, you know, or they would have reached out. But that is far from the truth. I have secured lots of partnerships and brand deals just simply by reaching out, you know? There's so many influencers out there, so many content creators out there, and you want to make yourself, you want to separate yourself from the rest. So by reaching out, it just shows that there, it shows how much you're really interested, how genuine it is. And also, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of hard for them to come across every single influencer content creator out there. Pros and cons of being a content creator. Um, whoo, man. And she also asked how to become a successful content creator with natural hair, natural hair content, etc. Um, again, let me know if you guys would want a video, like a dedicated video, or maybe I should start a series in regards to content creation. Granted, I'm no expert or anything like that. You know, I'm still new to this. But I do, I, th I do think I've learned quite a bit, you know, on this journey. I also don't want to make this video solely about that. So if you'd be interested in that, comment below and let me know. Next question is, do you speak or understand Jamaican dialect or any other Caribbean island dialect? I mean, I definitely understand Jamaican dialect. I just don't speak it because it just doesn't come naturally to me. And nothing hurts my ears more than hearing somebody who didn't grow up on, you know, on the language or speaking the language, trying to speak it. It's just, oh my gosh, it's... It's terrible. If I ever speak it, I'd probably text it or maybe I'm like joking around. I may be imitating somebody, but I never actually just, you know what I'm saying? Say it. it just doesn't come naturally for me. I'm so jealous and admire the people who were born in like, for example, New York and have the New York accent and they can switch over to the, to the Pato like it's nothing. It would be nice, but you know, it is what it is. And then as far as any other Caribbean islands dialect, I mean, for the most part, yeah. I mean, it's not that different. Using context clues, I can figure it out. I also understand a little bit of Creole, just a little bit, like this much. I have quite a few Haitian friends, so I try. I try my best to speak it, you know, whenever I'm around like my friend's family and stuff like that. You have a love-hate relationship with TikTok. Somebody, that's somebody's assumption. And I couldn't agree with you more. Oh my gosh, like TikTok. TikTok is something else. Like, it's funny on one hand, and there's times where I'm literally sitting there dying laughing, scrolling on TikTok. Like, it's hilarious. But then I get to scrolling in the comments, and I'm just like, what is wrong with y'all? Like, mental illness. Like, I feel like some people are just sick in the head. Like, out of all social media platforms, I think the comments on TikTok are the most out of pocket. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. People just be saying some crazy off the wall stuff that they would never have the balls to say if it wasn't for, you know what I'm saying, the internet. So I don't like that. Do you feel complete where with where you are in your life? Um, to be honest with y'all, yeah. I feel, I feel pretty complete. At least as of right now, I feel like I'm on the right path. I'm doing what I guess you could say I'm called to do right now, so. Do you want children? Do I want children? I think I want to say yes. I love kids. Love, love, love kids. Um, if everything else in my life aligns, like if God willing, you know, I have a husband and I'm married and all that fun stuff, whenever that'll be. I'm just not in a rush to do that. You know, whenever that time comes, like I said, if it's in God's will, I'm here for it. A brand you would like to work with natural hair wise. Um, there are brands that I wish I worked with more often, like for example, Camille Rose. I wish I worked with Curls more often because you know, you guys know how much I love their products and promote their products already. It would be nice to, you know what I'm saying, work with them a little more often because I give them so much free promo already, you know what I mean? But I've worked with quite a few brands. I can't even complain. I hate to sound ungrateful, but only because you asked. I would say, yeah, that. How invigorating does it feel not to have to go to work? I truly love that for you you guys like invigorating is an understatement like just talking about it you guys see how much like my face lights up like every day i'm just so grateful that i don't have to wake up get in my car sit in traffic for like 45 minutes or rush to work to be there for eight hours take that itty bitty 30 minute break to rush to come back for a few more hours and then to have to sit in another hour of traffic to come back home <laughs> And be so miserable where I'm at. Like, you guys have no idea. Like, I'm just so 
happy like granted i honestly feel like i'm probably work i've been working a lot more than i was when i was you know working a nine to five job and clocking in but it's doing something that i love so it's okay like i'm not i'm not tripping not tripping over it i would take this any day over what i was doing before any day any day of the week how did your job manager supervisor co-workers react when you told them you were leaving to become a full-time influencer so my immediate manager she was she was happy for me she was happy for me she told me listen she's a real one she is a real one she told me that you know she would never hold anybody back from you know chasing their dreams and listen if you can find if you can do something that doesn't require you to have to clock in and clock out every day go for it she supports granted like you know she was a little bummed understandably like of course you know they were going to be short staffed because they were already short staffed before i left but that was like the least of her worries she didn't even express her you know disappointment in that regard like she was just super supportive but i couldn't have asked for a better reaction so that is that so one of them was trying to convince me to stay like oh are you sure you want to you know you don't want to just maybe do part-time even if it means just coming in one day out of the week i feel like if i were to do that i wouldn't be giving the influencing thing my all it's like one foot in one foot out and I was so sick of that job. One day a week is still too much. Like, that's too much. And then one day a week, like, I'm getting paid how much money just to come in one day out of the week? Take out how much time out of my day to come here for, like, a couple dollars? Uh, no thanks. What's your college experience been like? How was your experience getting in? Oh, my God. College, you guys, was some of the best years of my life. Like, some of the best years of my life. I had so much fun in college. My experience getting in. The experience getting in, to be honest, I wasn't. I know most people, you know, they apply for colleges and like, oh my gosh, this is my dream school and like I tried so hard and yeah, no, that wasn't the case for me. I've had too many letdowns when it comes to getting into schools, like throughout the years from like middle school to high school. So when it came to college, I was like, listen, wherever I'm supposed to be, that's where I'm gonna be and I'll figure it out. Like I wasn't trying to get my hopes up like I had in the past, like you see in the movies and the shows and stuff like that, if that makes sense. Do you work out and if so, how often? Oof, baby. That's one thing that I need to get. I'm trying to get, well, not trying. Let me stop lying. Um, I want to get into the habit of working out. Oh my gosh, I fell off big time. I fell off big time. I want to blame COVID, but like, listen, that's literally no excuse. It's my fault. Now that I'm working from home, I have the time. I just need to, you know, find a way to manage my time better so I can squeeze that into my schedule. I'm thinking about maybe investing in a trainer or something like that. Um, I know it's not good to necessarily rely on somebody, but. I can't be everything in my life, man. Being an influencer, I do so much already. So if I have to pay somebody to, you know, get my body right, then it is what it is. You miss Jamaica. That's an assumption. Do I? Oh my gosh, you guys. I miss Jamaica so, so much. I was supposed to be going next month. I'm so bummed out. Oh my gosh. But with this curfew and the lockdown they have going on, that looks like that's not going to happen. I had a pretty packed itinerary and I was not trying to be limited because of the curfew. And you know, cases there, you know, are pretty bad. So... I decided to postpone my trip, but it also gives me time to kind of prep because I really want to go all out for that trip. Like, want to get lots of content, really elevate, I'm hoping to collaborate collaborate with some creatives there, and I have lots of plans. So, Jamaica probably won't see me until next year, hopefully, God willing. But yes, I very much miss Jamaica. <sighs> Do you want to get married one day soon? Yeah, that's the plan. Same with kids. I would love to have a family and like, but the way it's looking right now, oh no. Granted, I'm still young. What, I'm 24, I still have time, but it's not something that I'm losing sleep over or impressed about. Like every person I'm dating, oh my gosh, is this my future husband? Yeah, no, definitely not on that vibe. I'm just living life right now. <laughs> the moisturizing your hair video, oh my gosh, y'all. To be honest, like I feel like I come up with these seats every single time this question, somebody asked me this question. I just feel like most of my videos are, now it's like pretty self-explanatory like if you watch my wash and go videos you kind of already know but the moisturizing your hair video is pretty much just like how to get the perfect wash and go so um i know i postponed that video for so so long now i don't even know if you guys are really would if, if most of you guys would even still be interested in that because like i said i pretty much like walk you guys through how i do my wash and goes but if you guys want a thorough beginner friendly 101 tutorial of how to get the perfect wash and go so that your hair is nice and moisturized hydrated defined you got hold all that fun stuff let me know in the comments so i can get on that is it easy being a creator full-time no the answer is a hard no 
I love what I'm doing, don't get me wrong, but to say that it's easy, nah. I'll give you guys an example. Oh my gosh. Look how much clay I have left, y'all. Look how much hair I have to do. Well, I'm glad that, you know, people are starting to learn this. You know, people don't think that it's just like, oh yeah, you sit around and take pictures all day and you post and that's it and you get paid to do that. I'm glad, you know, that misconception has, you know, is starting to die down as, you know, the space is evolving. But like, y'all, you're so many things. You're literally your own videographer, creative director, photographer, editor, manager, publicist, freaking negotiator, accountant, just like so many things. And it's a lot, like it really is a lot trying to juggle all of that. Just for example, this last week, I wanted to film like a vlog for you guys so you can see the behind the scenes of like what it's like, but I was just so exhausted and tired. This kind of ties into the question, what are the pros and cons of being an influencer? Bro, like last week I had so many deadlines, so that's my fault. I, I overbooked myself kind of, sort of. Last week is not, the ideal a week in my life like that can't be like my everyday life because that was just so gruesome i was out here washing my hair damn near every other day which is one not healthy for my hair i'm like filming one day editing getting the video video done the next day for one of the deadlines i had to make i stayed up until 4 a.m trying to dry my hair because i didn't get to wash and style my hair until like about midnight finally finished styling my hair now i'm trying to dry it just enough so that i can go to sleep without messing up my hair well i sat under the hooded dryer but that was taking too long I was standing in the mirror in my bathroom at 4 a.m. with my Dyson trying to blow dry my hair. I'm literally falling asleep while blow drying my hair, y'all. I kid y'all not, not exaggerating. I'm standing and I dream something for like a brief second and then I open my eyes and I'm like, oh wow. Like I'm standing right now, I'm really drying my hair. I'm not in bed. Like this is crazy. This is crazy. Like that is dedication. But again, like I said, you know, I signed these contracts. I agreed to these deadlines. Real. I mean, granted, I knew it was gonna be a lot. I just, and you know, I'm still new to this. So I'm trying to like whatever, you know, sponsorships or whatever opportunities come my way that align with my brand. I'm trying my best to, you know what I'm saying? Take as many as I can, keep the momentum going. But that was just like absurd. And I'm still trying to, I'm still working on time management and trying to find that work to life balance, which is really difficult. It's really hard because like you always feel like you have work to do. You always have a video that you need to be editing, um, content ideas that you need to be brainstorming about. There's like always something that needs to be done. So you telling yourself, hey, at this time, I'm gonna stop working and I'm gonna just chill. I'm gonna just unwind. Most times, like I'm literally at my computer pretty much the whole day, not even eight hours, but like from the moment I wake up, granted I take breaks here and there, but up until like 10 p.m. that night, I'm like on the computer, which is not good, it's not healthy, and that's not what I want long-term, but I'm still really new to this. I'm still adjusting and adapting. Um, I'm still getting acclimated with this lifestyle, but yeah, y'all, it's a lot. It really is a lot, it's not easy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some more of this stuff right here so I can finish this section. Um, and I will be right back, y'all. Oh, here as well. It's also a little more liquidy than the first time. But we move. Okay, so now onto the YouTube questions. First question here is, could you consider adding more vlogs? You seem like such a fun person. Stop. And since people like that comment, y'all make me feel so special, honestly. Um, I really do want to start doing vlogs. That's something that I would really love to do more of. I mean, so it means a lot that you guys are actually interested in seeing that type of content. I feel like y'all don't get to see the real me, the fun me, I guess you could say. So for y'all to say that y'all think I seem fun and I just be out here doing my hair, like, just wait, sis. Like, y'all really haven't seen nothing yet, for real, for real. But I appreciate that. Um, um, okay, so next question, are you dating? Am I dating? Hmm, am I dating? Um, like, like dating. <laughs> I don't know why I find this question so hard to answer. I'm single, um, and I'm open to new experiences, I guess, if that makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily, I hate labeling things and putting titles on things. I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm dating, but 
I'm open to meeting new people, you know, and all that fun stuff. Hopefully that answers your question. If okay, what was the worst date you've ever been on? See, like, would y'all believe me if I said I don't really go out on dates like that? Like, I can't tell you the last, well, okay, I'm lying. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't really be going out on dates like that with people that I don't already know, you know, if that makes sense. Like, if I'm dating somebody, typically, or maybe we were friends or associates or something, and then it led to, you know, going out on dates and stuff like that. But like, I honestly don't have much experience going out on dates with random people, if that makes sense. The pros and cons of being a content creator, yeah, like I was touching on that earlier. I think I touched more so on the cons rather than the pros. So, um, so the pros I would definitely say would be like, you know, like the community that you have, like the, the, the relationships you build through social media, you know, and like having that connection with your followers, your audience and stuff like that, having that influence. What else, what are some other pros? Like being able to just be creative and like, you know, making your own schedule and like, so this is also a pro and I would say probably a con as well, like you control your income you control how much you're growing on your platforms so on the plus side you know if you decide you want to take a vacation you can just know that of course that's gonna affect your pockets because it's not like you have somebody else working for you unless of course you plan your content ahead of time so that when you're on your break you're on your vacation you still have content to post so that's that is doing a curly cut trim just as good as blowing your hair and trimming it I think so only thing is that when it's time for you to blow dry or shade your hair your hair is more than likely gonna be uneven What's your take on this no oils, no butter trend? So, wow, um, I feel like I'm a fake YouTuber because I've heard about it, but I haven't really like done much research on it. So if I understand correctly, the trend is that you don't use oils or butters in your hair, but then I think I saw somebody say that you can't use a product that has oils or butters in the first few ingredients. If that's the case, then I don't know um, about that. As far as no oils, no butters, like actual butters, like shea butter and like oils in your hair, well, y'all already know, I don't really use oils on my hair like that. If I use oils, it's usually just to like add a little shine, maybe break a gel cast. It's not like a mandatory part of my routine and I can I can definitely live without it. Do oils have benefits? I think so. It, it really just depends on, on what you wanna do with your hair, but me being a wash and go girl, butters like and oils are just something that i can certainly live without they're not necessary um and i can definitely see how people struggle with washing goes because all they're using is butters and oils and stuff so where did you think you would be at your age who definitely not here i have always been so uncertain about the future just like had no idea what i wanted in life what i wanted to do career wise um i didn't think i would be self-employed I also probably wouldn't think that I would be living at home that's another thing I would say because when you know I started college and once I got a taste of that you know living on your own lifestyle I was like oh yeah there's no way I'm coming back home there's just no way but look at me at home but like I told y'all one of the smartest decisions I made I'm so glad I decided to bite the bullet and move back home probably wouldn't have had the courage to really take that leap of faith. You know what I mean? What do you look for in a partner? Ooh, Oof, that's a packed question. I'm gonna keep it simple. Somebody honest, genuine, somebody with personality. As you guys can tell, your girl has lots of personality. I'm very animated. Somebody funny, ideally, or somebody that has a relationship with God. And ideally somebody who's good looking, of course. Um, I think that I pretty much touched on everything. I'm not gonna get too in detail, but hopefully that answered like your question generally. What's the most frustrating, frustrating thing about being an influencer? I kind of already like touched on that. One thing that I would say is also really frustrating is when the algorithm doesn't go in your favor, especially when it's something that you worked really, really hard on. Like for example, my bikini um, reel, I don't know if you guys saw my bikini reel or TikTok, I'll go ahead and insert it if YouTube doesn't copyright me. But y'all, I spent so much time putting that reel TikTok together and I was really hoping that I was gonna do numbers. Like I really thought the reach and engagement on that video was pretty much average compared to like my other videos. So I was kind of like, damn. Like you have this video that I spent how many hours on and then you have a video that I spent not even like 10 minutes on, like the freaking TikTok with the girl to the Lloyd song. That one got like million, two million views and I, I put zero effort into my appearance. So the production of the video was literally something that I just filmed, took like maybe 10 minutes, five minutes out of my day to do and it did numbers, but that's the way of the game. That's how it goes. But so that can be frustrating. 
Um, by the way, Glam Getter, you got some really good questions. Um, favorite shows or movies? Favorite movie, I would probably say hands down, is probably White Chicks. Any movie by the Wayans Brothers, they're just so funny. But to be honest with y'all, I don't really watch many shows and movies like that. Like that. I just don't be having the time. I would say Power. Power was my favorite show. I haven't been too interested in this most recent season. That was definitely probably one of my favorite shows. And then Manifest. I just finished watching Manifest, which I thought was really a really great show. Wasn't too much of a fan of the last season, but let me know if you guys have watched Power or Manifest. What's your thought? What your thoughts were? Next question is: If you drink Starbucks, what do you usually order? Um, I usually order. I think I threw away the cup, but I usually get the man mango dragon fruit mango. No. Dra dragon fruit mango lemonade refresher that's usually my go-to drink i'm not really a starbucks girl but if i am ordering starbucks which i have been a lot lately i'm usually getting that drink have you ever thought about playing around with wigs if yes which style i love your natural hair by the way not trying to push anything on you i appreciate you girl but thought about it but i don't know what do you guys think would suit me like i thought about it just because like i want to switch it up and just give myself like you know a completely new look at one point i said i wanted to try like maybe a bob or something like that i don't know you guys let me know if i were to try a wig what do you think i would look good with and if i should even consider trying it is that something you guys would be interested in seeing let me know what was the hardest part about transitioning back to your natural curls um probably just like accepting how i looked with my heat damaged hair i think that was probably like the hardest thing to be honest with y'all so if you're not new here i started transitioning from heat damage to you know i guess my natural curls back in college and y'all already know freshman year of college you're trying to be cute you're trying to be you know what i'm saying you're trying to look your best yeah i'm trying to be confident with heat damaged hair it's really hard i'm not gonna lie to y'all it's really hard and i wish i had better advice when it comes to that um, but i struggled myself and you know so yeah okay so a few of the other questions like um natural hair related questions like for example somebody asked be best natural hair products in your arsenal so i am planning on doing a week of favorites video one of you guys suggested i do that so i'm planning on doing that in the next week or so so stay tuned for that how to maintain your wash and go throughout the week i guess i can do like a week in my wash and go video that's another thing i gotta add to my list of videos to film all right y'all so i pretty much touched on everything so i am gonna go ahead and rinse this stuff out and then i'll get back to you guys with uh, those results so i was just reminded why I like to rinse out my clay mask in the shower because I just tried doing it over the tub, which I never do. I literally never rinse my hair out over the tub because of this reason. Well, granted, deep conditioners and stuff like that are usually a lot easier to rinse out, but y'all know clay can be a little stubborn. So to make sure I got out everything, I made a little bit of a mess. So just wanted to quickly close this video out for you guys. Oh, by the way, hair is super defined. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.